Frederick Lauren. And I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party. A haunted house party. I don't want to stay. Wait. The original house on Haunted Hill was directed by William Castle in 1959. It was one of over 60 films that this native New Yorker directed and produced from the early 1940s and into the 1970s. A master showman, Castle was always eager to push the boundaries of cinema. I'm William Castle, and I feel obligated to warn you about the next attraction you will see at this theater. The picture is The Tingler, which I directed. And for the first time in motion picture history, members of the audience, including you, will actually play a part in the picture. You will feel some of the physical reactions the shocking sensations experienced by the actors on the screen. For his 1963 horror classic, The Tingler, Castle went so far as to have electric shocks buzz the audience during the movie. When you see the picture, you will be told and remember the instruction how you can guard yourself from attack by The Tingler. For one of Castle's more macabre pictures, theater ushers were clad in surgical garb and ambulances waited outside each theater to rush anyone to the hospital that was dying of fright. Let me ask you a question. Uh, were you holding his hands throughout the picture? I was holding him back. He was running out. <laughs> For 1961's Homicidal, audience members were guaranteed their scares. When you go to see my picture, Homicidal, you'll get one of these certificates. Then at the climax of Homicidal, there will be a fright break. If you are too frightened to stay to see the rest of the picture, you can present this certificate at the Coward's Corner and get your full admission price refunded. Oh, and please, don't reveal the ending of Homicidal to your friends, or they will kill you. If they don't, I will. And for House on Haunted Hill, William Castle placed an elaborate pulley system in each theater, which at the appropriate time would fly a skeleton over the heads of the audience. I'm going to knock on the other wall. When you hear me, you knock on this wall. But the horror mostly relied on an ominous atmosphere, a cast of likable victims, and things that go bump in the night. As times changed, however, the effects that used to scare audiences now get more laughs than screams. The 1999 remake builds off the plot of the original version, but updates the film to scare modern audiences, raised on a diet of increasingly sophisticated special effects. From here on, it gets really scary. The 1999 remake of House on Haunted Hill, directed by William Malone and co-written by Dick Beebe, is one of the first of many William Castle films to be updated by Dark Castle, a company run by mega-hit producer Joel Silver and Academy Award-winning producer-director Robert Zemeckis. When we first started talking about the story, uh, Dick Beebe and I and, and, uh, and Joel and Bob Zemeckis, was that uh, it was... When I was a child, I, I was sort of disappointed when I saw the original film that there were no real ghosts because it sort of advertised as a ghost movie. And uh, we all thought it would be fun if we played with the notion that we don't know whether or not there's real ghosts or not. And of course, in our film, it turns out that there actually are ghosts. No! Mainly what we tried to keep from the old picture is really its sort of uh, uh, sense of humor and uh, just the, the to sort of tone of the film. <laughs> All you want to be is a lovely widow. It's almost time to lock up the house. And then your party will really begin. I wonder how it'll end. Everything you do gets me hot, just not in the sexual sense. You're hurting me. I know. Ow! Well, there's the simple country gal I married. Let's go back down and greet your guests. Show them the real you. Hello, my dear. This is my wife. These are our guests. Ruth Bridges, 
Dr. Trent, you know Watson Pritchard, of course, Nora Manning, and uh, this is Lance Schroeder. The characters in the original picture reflected icons of an earlier era. Annabelle Lauren, the psychotic trophy wife, was played by Carol Omart, who was Miss Utah in 1947. Get me out of this hanging harness. Famke Jansen updated the role as Evelyn. The character of Evelyn, I mean, she's such a devious, conniving character, and uh, she really needs to have the sense that there's always something going on in her, in her head. We sort of see in her eyes. You know, if you really love me, you find a way to drop dead in the next three seconds. And we looked at a lot of actresses for the part, and uh, Famke really seemed to have that kind of uh, uh, innate quality to make that work, and uh, she did a terrific job in the picture. <laughs> it may sound a little crazy, but hear me out. <laughs> Peter Gallagher updated the role of the psychologist, Dr. David Trent, played by Alan Marshall. In the original picture, the character was a guy who uh, winds up in cahoots with the Evelyn character and uh, in the end of the film dies. And of course our picture, we needed to have some sort of uh, changes early on and so we wound up killing off uh, Blackburn. Peter Gallagher uh, lends a nice sort of evil quality to the, to the picture of the, the guy who is something, something completely different than what he uh, initially seems. The misplaced celebrity, Melissa Ma, played by Bridget Wilson, was columnist Ruth Bridges, played by Julie Mitchum. Both characters obviously didn't mind getting their hands dirty for a story. Bridget plays a really fun character. She's also kind of a, she's kind of a living Warner Brothers cartoon. She was very funny on the set and uh, brought a lot of humor to the show, I think. In both pictures, the wife counts on a young woman to go crazy with fright, enough to pull the trigger on her husband. No. In the original, Carolyn Craig played Nora Manning, quite the type to go a little batty. Mr. Pritchard, you said they found hands and feet, but they never found any heads. Would you like to see one of those heads? Would you all like to see one of those heads? Well then, just follow me. For the update, Sarah Wolfe is played by Ali Larder. Uh, Ali Larder, playing, of course, our, our female lead in the picture, uh, we were looking for somebody who really had this sort of girl-next-door quality, somebody that uh, you liked immediately. And uh, her character, I think, is interesting because she is pretending to be somebody else. So who are you, really? I told you already. Jennifer Jensen, executive VP. You're lying, all right. But the no, fact that she has sort of conned her way into this turns out to be a blessing and a curse at the same time. I think that uh, we pretty much wore uh, Allie Larder out, though. She, she had to do a lot of battling in that blood and, and I think was not happy with me by the end of the day. But, but she was a good sport about it, so. What the hell are you doing? Tay Diggs updates the role of pilot Lance Schroeder, played by Richard Long who is best known for his role as Jared Barclay on the TV series, The Big Valley. Here, he's an all-American boy next door type of hero. Please, Nora. Please hide me, please hide me. What's the matter? Hide me. Tay Diggs had his own style of heroism. Damn. You're pretty handy yourself. Tay Diggs plays in, in our film an ex-baseball player. The thing that we all liked about yeah, Tay was empty. he has sort this. of a warm vulnerability. Get, let go. All right, there we go. <laughs> you know, which is something that's really important for your main character cool. in, in the film. And that's something that I think uh, Tay is, is sort of innate in his, his personality yeah. as well. Hey, pal. That wasn't code for... What? Can you just shine the light here? Absolutely. Both pictures have their own Watson Pritchett, the strange owner of the house. The thing, the evil, 
The thing that's the rotten core at the bottom of this place. The thing that's gonna kill us all. Destroys everything with hair and flesh. Just leaves the bones. Elisha Cook Jr., um, who you might remember from uh, Maltese Falcon, who plays the Gunsel in Maltese Falcon, he plays the, the Pritchard character in the original film. And he has this kind of slightly demented quality to him. This is what she used on my brother and her sister. And we, you know, when we got Chris Kattan to come on board, uh, he uh, sort of had that quality as well as being very funny. I'm just a little bit uncomfortable with this. I'm sure you are. He uh, doesn't really play it for laughs. He's just funny because he's Chris. And uh, he plays it actually fairly straight as this guy who's just right on the edge of a nervous breakdown, which with Chris is hysterically funny. <laughs> so what, we're stuck here forever? Uh, cleaning crew's supposed to come in at 9.30 in the morning. Jeez. Oh, so then we'll just stay here till morning. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be mutilated beyond recognition by then. Rounding out the cast is the master showman of them all, Frederick Lauren, in the role that started Vincent Price's long career of horror movies. Who knows, you may want to use it on me before this night is over. A lot of people think that we actually went out and tried to find somebody who looked like Vincent Price because Jeffrey Rush winds up looking so much like Vincent Price in the movie, and that was really uh, coincidental. It's funny because Jeffrey really wanted to play the, that role uh, as John Waters, the film director, and uh, so once we put him in sort of John Waters' makeup, then he suddenly looked like Vincent Price, so that was just the way it happened. <laughs> and on that mercenary note, dear friends, let the games begin. One of the things that we wanted to keep in, in our version that I, I liked a lot in the original film was the scene with Price and Evelyn in uh, the bedroom, the uh, and, which is early in the film when they're talking about the guests. And I thought the original film, that was really one of the strongest scenes. You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes, arsenic on the rocks. Annabelle, you'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Darling, what makes you think that? Let's not forget the O.J. knife with the not quite retractable blade. Your Jim Jones Kool-Aid that was exactly that. Accidents. All accidents until proven otherwise. I'd be so happy if that were really true, Evelyn. Well, one of the scenes that, that I think is a lot of fun in the original film is where they... Uh, Vincent Price uh, lays out all these guns for the guests, which is incredibly diabolical. This is my wife's idea. I must say, I think it's rather dangerous. We wanted to retain that, and uh, we set them all in this coffin with this sort of bubbling uh, fog, which, which is sort of consistent with uh, Price's character. He's a real showman, so whatever he would do would be very showman-like. So how's a girl to know if these things are loaded, Puff? Only one way I can think of. Pull the trigger. We, uh, Dick Beebe, when I say we, Dick Beebe and I, uh, early on we had discussions about uh, the movie. We needed something that when they came in the door, we got a sense that something was going to happen, that the house was alive. William Castle set the original house on Haunted Hill, deep in the Hollywood Hills, at architect Frank Lloyd Wright's Ennis Brown House. Uh, what was odd about that movie is once you got inside, the interior design was completely different. Well, where is everybody? It isn't a very warm welcome, is it? Only the ghosts in this house are glad we're here. We wanted to at least make ours at least all consistent, so we created an outside to match the inside that we did. For the plot of the remake, Malone and Beebe felt the need to give the house an even more sinister character. Sure is a funky old house, ain't it? The idea for the, the house being a former mental institution really came out of, uh, I'd done an episode of Tales from the Crypt in England, and we were scouting locations and came across this former mental institution that had been converted into a house. And when we went to film there, the, uh, the, the location manager came to me and said, well, you realize we're going to have to exercise this place before you can film there. And I went, 
okay, <laughs> if you say so. And, but once we got there, I realized, why wow, this place was so creepy. It was just, it was unbelievable. And uh, a lot of the crew would like go down to the basement, uh, which was absolutely medieval. And uh, they'd come in a few minutes, you'd hear them like running up the stairs, like yelling and stuff. So nobody wanted to go in the basement. I thought, what a great place to set a horror film is actually in this place. So that's really where the idea came from. I think uh, we gained a couple things in having it be a mental institution. One is that the setting itself is creepy, which is always a good thing because you want to keep all the tone and mood the same. And also we ha were then saddled with not just ghosts, but crazy ghosts, which I think is a, a, a really cool notion. A good old-fashioned hanging was sufficient enough for Annabelle to fake her death in William Castle's original. But for Bill Malone's updated version, Evelyn's death needed a little more spark. One of the keys to the horror genre has always been that the guilty get what they deserve. In the original, only two people, Annabelle and her accomplice, the Doctor, meet their demise. For the remake, all but two of the characters meet their ghostly demise leaving only Sarah and Eddie five million dollars for surviving the night. If I don't, I lose ten thousand dollars. I'm going to stay too. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah. This shows the inflation in both body count and the economy since the 1950s. If any of you decide not to stay, you must leave with the caretakers now. You won't have a chance to change your minds later because there'll be no way to get out. Eddie? This concludes our tale of two houses, each having their own unique blend of thrills. Beware, for as you can see, the spirit of William Castle lives on. They're coming for me now. And then they'll come for you.